In this video, I'd like to take a look at Pixelmator Photo for the iPad. Pixelmator also makes a pro version of this application for the desktop on the Mac only. Uh, and this is actually pretty similar to what's available on the desktop. So as I'd like to uh, be able to do more editing of infrared photos on the iPad, uh, we'll take a look at this application to see if this would fit the bill. Uh, it's, it's actually quite a good program and there's a couple tricks that I'd like to show you that will make it even better for editing infrared. This is version 1.2.1, uh, so let's get started. So we'll open up Pixelmator Photo and then we can select an image. Uh, there's a wide variety of RAW files supported, so we'll open up a RAW file. And let's take a quick tour of the interface. So first of all, you'll see this ML icon throughout the application that stands for machine learning that's basically the the automatic capability of the application so you can you can select that to to automate a variety of features uh, some of it's good uh, some of it's not so good for infrared um, so we'll just click that off for now but it exists throughout the application and we'll see more of that there's a repair tool much like the photoshop heal tool that's quite good uh, there's a crop tool there are uh, advanced adjustments uh, and we'll talk about uh, those in some depth so uh, let's, uh, first of all, of course I wanna do my white balance, but let's brighten up the image a little bit so we can see it better. So I'll come down to this lightness area and we'll click ML to let the machine give us a better uh, exposure value. Now if I go under white balance, I'm going to select the eyedropper and we'll pick a spot on this fence here to set a white balance. And while the, the, the look of the white balance looks pretty good, we've got good separation between the foliage and the sky, you'll see that the, the temperature and tint values have capped out at negative 100. Um, and so uh, that doesn't give us a lot of flexibility, but there's a little trick here I'd like to show you. If you go into the menu and settings, you can select extended values. And what that does is that doubles the range of many of the sliders. So instead of the range of the white balance sliders being from negative 100 to 100, they're now negative 200 to 200. And as a result, you can see that the actual values that we've got are well below negative 100 and, and more accurate. And so now if I wanted to tweak these a little bit, I can do that um, and, and that'll work just fine. The next thing we would want to do is look at a channel mixer. Uh, in order to make some space on the interface, I'm going to go up here under white balance and I'm going to select lock, which will close this down and sort of lock the settings. I can do that in the lightness as well. Uh, if there's ever uh, a value that you don't want, you can use this toggle to close it, which will also disable it, but the lock value will close and retain uh, the value that you'd like. So let's scroll down to the channel mixer. So it's great that there's a channel mixer here. So we'll toggle this on and now we can make adjustments. So We'll start with the red channel, and with the red channel, I will reset that to zero, and the blue channel will go to 100. Okay, and we'll go to the blue channel. We'll reset the blue to zero, and we'll put the red up to 100. Okay. So we've got the mixer channel, the mixer channel all set, uh, and now we can see that we've got uh, our our sky is blue, our foliage is yellow, and everything looks really nice. So that's excellent. Now there is a downside though to using the mixer channel, the, the the channel mixer, and let me show you what that is. It affects the other how the other tools work. So for example, if I go to uh, selective color, which is this really nice tool uh, that's available here, you can see that uh, there's uh, the whole array of visible light colors and these peaks represent the colors that are used in the image, which is really convenient for selecting uh, colors and making adjustments. So if I was to select this orange color, which covers most of the foliage and start to make an adjustment, and if you look at the image, it's kind of hard to tell, but you'll see that it's actually affecting the sky. It's not affecting the orange color. And if I was to come to the blues and do the same thing and start affecting the adjustment, that color actually affects the foliage. So what's happening here is because of the channel mixer, the colors are inverted and the way that these tools represents the colors is inverted. So that can be a little bit challenging. So there's another way we can use to, to swap our colors and let's take a look at that. So first of all, I'm going to reset and disable the selective color. 
then I'm going to go back down to the channel mixer. We'll unlock that. I will uh, disable the channel mixer so that's no longer available. And the other method I want to show you is the hue and saturation. So if I enable hue and saturation, I can take the hue value and just slide that over to 100%. And I have uh, the exact same effect as I would from the channel mixer. And the benefit is if I lock this, I can come down to selective color now. And now the values uh, that we see are actually represented. So, so the orange hues, if I make an adjustment to make these say a little pink, increase the saturation, make them pop a bit. There we go. Uh, and if I go over to the blues and adjust how the blues look, I can make similar adjustments. Let's darken the blues for a dramatic, a little more dramatic effect. Okay, so uh, selective color uh, makes much more sense when we've used the hue saturation to flip our colors as opposed to the channel mixer, but you can basically do either way. Another tool that I'd like to show you is the color balance tool. So let me lock down selective color. We'll keep those settings uh, and find color balance. So right here. So in color balance, this is a, a tool we've seen in many applications, uh, which is a great tool for fine tuning uh, how you want to deal with color. So let's say that I'm in the shadows and I want to remove maybe some of the blues from the shadows. So I can come down to this slider here and add in some yellows and I can play around with the different sliders to get the, the results I want. Pull some of the reds out of the shadows and let's go over to the highlights. Uh, and I can tweak these colors. This is definitely an area where you want to play around with the results and see what you get because it's only affecting the highlights, the midtones, or the shadows. It may not be as obvious. Another thing that's nice is that in addition to the, the color sliders, you can actually impact uh, the saturation. So let me go over to the midtones. I can increase the saturation and the brightness. So I have a great deal of control here within the color balance tool. So this is a really nice tool for uh, manipulating colors. Another tool that I'd like to show you is the replace color tool. So let's close down our color balance. We'll keep those settings and find the replace color. So this tool allows us to select a color uh, and, and only replace that color. So if I use the picker and pick the color that I have here, you can see that it's been represented in the tool. And now I can, uh, I, I can pick a range of what I want this to look like and, and the direction that I want it to go in. So if I pick the, if I select the two option, I can pick a different color, a completely different color that I want to transform that into and you can see it's very responsive. We get really good real-time feedback. So I've picked a, a second color to, to just do a complete change of the colors. And now I can come down to range and really fine tune how aggressive it is. So does it replace a small range of colors at the low end of the scale, or does it begin to replace more colors at the higher end of the scale? And then you can affect the intensity as well. So how much replacement do you want? So again, another great tool replace color that gives you a lot of control over uh, the colors in your images. I'm going to shut this off for now. Another uh, great capability that we have here in Pixelmator is the ability to, to convert your images to black and white. So there's a black and white tool. And what's really nice about this is that not only do we get the black and white conversion, but we still have some color control to be able to manipulate the colors in the image. So for example, if I take the red slider up, you can see I can really make the foliage pop. And with the, if I take the blue slider down, I could darken these up. So even though this is a 590 nanometer shot, uh, I could make this look more like a 720 or an 850 shot uh, just by some of the adjustments that I have here. So not only is this tool really good for color infrared photo, it has some great capabilities for black and white infrared photo as well. So this is a really nice. Also, I can adjust the tone. So get a little bit more granular and then the intensity of the effect. So if I just want desaturated look, I can use this tool to get that effect. 
You may have noticed along the bottom of the screen there's a whole variety of presets available. Uh, and again, these are the type of things that might be really appealing to uh, visual photography. Uh, the, uh, the black and white could be uh, a nice starting point for uh, infrared photos, but many of these are going to be styled towards um, uh, visible light photography. But what's really nice about the presets is you can add your own preset. So I could take all of the work that I've done here and I can click this plus button down in the custom C for custom custom preset and you can see this has been saved as a preset so that's really nice so if I now uh, select done and indicate that I'm finished working on this image now I can come over to another image and open that up and we'll go into the advanced adjustments and now you can see that the presets are available so Here's a, here's a preset with just a channel swap only uh, channel mixer to get a baseline. And here's the, uh, a, a, a preset with the, the changes that I just made to that other image. So this is a great way if you have a, a particular style that you like with your, with your infrared photos, then you can save that as a preset or save a variety of them and easily make changes to other photos. So let's look at exporting. So if I want to, if I'm going to head up to the menu here and I'm going to select export, We'll talk a little bit about the file formats that are available. We have the HEIF, which is that uh, standard file format used in on the iPhone and then on the iPad. We have JPEG. JPEG, of course, you can have a quality control. We can scale the size of the output. So if you want the original size or if you want to reduce size for social media, that's available as well. PNG allows us to, to select the number of channels. So an 8-bit channel is more like a GIF and a 16-bit is more like a JPEG. We could also export as a TIFF, so we could still retain a lot of the um, original quality if I wanted to work on this in the future I could, or, or work within another application, I could save this as a 16-bit TIFF and retain all of the quality. And then we have the photo format, which is actually the native format for Pixelmator. This is sort of like a PSD in the sense that it's full quality, it retains all the capabilities for you to continue to edit, it's not a format that you would use to share the image in, but it's a great format for maintaining the original image, its quality, and being able to uh, make additional changes in the future, and then you can export into one of these other formats for sharing. So a lot of great capabilities in terms of exporting, which is really nice. Another thing I'd like to show you is the, uh, the batch capabilities, which are really interesting. So let me go back out to this, um, uh, to the, the file loading interface. If I select multiple images, so let me just pick up a couple images here, and I select this batch option. Now I have the ability to apply a number of presets and other settings to the images that I've just selected. I'm gonna come down to presets, and we'll pick this up and now I can look through the various presets that are available. In this case, I wanna look at the C, the custom presets that I created. I wanna select that preset that I just uh, made. I could go through and make a whole variety of changes. I could select the file format. Let's say I wanna export these as a JPEG. There we go, hit apply. So it'll apply the settings to all of these. And now it's applied all of those settings. And now I can decide what I want to do with these. Do I want to save these? Do I want to export them to another program um, or to social media? So if you have a particular style that you've got saved as a preset, you can use this capability uh, to, to export these very quickly. So that's a really nice feature. So just to recap, uh, Pixelmator photo for the iPad. This is a really great program. This has all the tools you need to edit raw infrared photos on the iPad. It has broad raw file support. It is super affordable at only five US dollars. Uh, so uh, many, many photo editing apps uh, on the iPad cost much more. This is a fully featured app. Um, it's got a lot of great capabilities for $5. It's really nice. If you like this program in the interface, Pixelmator Pro, the, the desktop version on, is available on the Mac for 40 US dollars. So that's another option if you, if you like working in this ecosystem. And right now, uh, Pixelmator is the best program that I've tested for editing infrared photos 
on the Mac. Uh, it's way better than the current version of Photoshop, which is very limited. Uh, the, the relatively early release of Photoshop on the iPad, not ready for prime time. But Pixelmator Pro is a great option for editing your photos on the iPad. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.